Okay, part two um, of three, two, work together. Um, we have done the first transaction and number two of the directions. So we're going to move on to the next transaction. The next one is July 7th as well. But this July 7th, we are recording employers' payroll taxes for the pay period ended July 3rd, memorandum number 55. Okay, so for this one, um, we need to go into our general journal because we're not making a cash payment. Um, so I need to go to my general journal. And the date is July 7th. Okay, and we are recording our, employee, uh, our employer's payroll taxes for the pay period ended July 3rd. So that's going to um, we're going to start with our sorry our payroll taxes expense trying to get organized here. So our payroll taxes expense and we're going to start with carpet. Okay, we are using memorandum fifty five for this. And what we're going to do is we figured out these numbers here. So here are our payroll taxes. So for carpet, it's going to be a debit of 302.7. Okay, and then for our payroll taxes expense, tile, we're going to debit that for 399.03. Okay, payroll taxes expense administrative is going to be 1.34.64. Okay, so those are all going to be our debits. Next, we're going to be crediting our payable account. So first, we're going to have our Social Security tax payable. We're going to credit that account for this number here that we figured out, 523.13. Medicare tax payable is going to be 122.35. Unemployment tax payable federal is going to be a credit of 19.09. And our unemployment tax payable state will be a credit of 171.8. And we do want to double check that our debits equal credits because we have quite a few debits and credits here. So just add them up to make sure we should be good there. So next transaction, um, July 15th, we made a deposit using the EFPPS for employee and employer payroll taxes for the June pay periods. Employee federal income tax withholdings are given, Social Security tax and Medicare tax. We're using memorandum number 56. Okay, so on this one, we are using an EFTPS. Um, so we're using a memorandum for our source documents. However, we're still making a cash payment. So we are going to go into our cash payments journal. The date is the 15th. And what we're going to do is we're going to debit first our employee income, our employee income tax payable federal. Okay, they tell us that that is going to be $1,159. They give that to us in the transaction. Oh, I should put it in here. Um, so since this is not a check and it's labeled as check, we do need to make sure that we put um, M in there. So we're going to say memorandum 56. If we didn't put that M in there, it, it would look like we are putting check 56. Okay, the next thing we're going to debit our Social Security tax payable. And we're going to debit that for what they tell us the transaction so two thousand two hundred thirty dollars and fifty two cents and we are also going to debit our medicare tax payable for five twenty three 
sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one, 521.67. Okay, so those are our debits. We're going to add those up then to get our cash credit. So our cash credit, what we're going to credit cash for should be $3,911.19. So what we're doing here is we're actually paying um, our taxes. The next thing I'm going to add number 57. So we're still in cash payments. The time, right? We're paying our unemployment taxes. So we're going to debit unemployment tax payable federal. We're using another memorandum, so I'm going to use M57. I'm going to debit that account for the amount given to us, 523.69. And I'm simply going to credit cash for that same amount, 523.69. And that transaction is also on the 29th. It says that we paid state unemployment tax for the quarter and a June 30th. $303.16, check number 579. So now I'm paying off my state unemployment. So I'm going to debit unemployment tax payable state. This time I'm using a check. So I'm just going to put the number 579. I'm going to debit that for 303.16. And I'm going to credit cash for 303.16. That should be it. Um, what I would maybe suggest doing for the three, um, two on your own is going back to the three, one on your own and printing that off. Remember, you will need the payroll register to help you fill out the on your own part. So it just might be um, worth printing that off, make it easier for you. Okay, so I'm going to check answer. Um, looks like everything is good. And save and continue. You can now go on to your 3-2 on your own.